sheet so that we can finish that up in class today and and move on. And, and a lot of you struggle with this, and I'm a little bit surprised, but I realize that it is kind of a new topic, and uh, it's you know kind of tiring when you have to do all this work that you junior high kids have to do. So let's take a look at what these are in, entailing and what they want us to do. So we're going to try and simplify this by getting the radicals to be the same and then adding or subtracting the coefficients. So if I look at the, the number 6, right away I know that that would break down into 2 times 3, which does not give me a, a matching pair. So this, is a, this part is already simplified. So the only simplifying I can do is over here with the 54. And because I have 6 in the first radical, I'm going to see if I can divide 54 by 6. And if I do that, 6 times 9 is 54. That worked out very nicely. So we got 6 here, and then 9 breaks down one more step into 3 times 3. So that's what 54 would break down into with a factor tree. Now we do have a matching pair of 3s. And as we've been talking about, if you have a matching pair, you take one out front of the radical. So one of those threes is going to come out in front and encounter that two right there. And we're going to do two times three. So when we do that, we will be left with the square root of negative square root of six minus two times three is six. And then the leftovers in this one it will be six. So we'll have the square root of six left behind. And now we can combine them. We got the two terms that are the square root of six here. So we look at the first one. The first one is just negative one square root of six. And then we have minus six square roots of six. So negative one minus six equals negative seven. So my final answer here then is negative seven square roots of six. All right, so that's problem number six. Let's move on to problem number 11. All right, as I look over at number 11, I notice that the middle term, 3 times the square root of 5, is already simplified as far as it can go because 5 is a prime number. But the first and the last terms are not simplified. So let's take that 20 and simplify that down into 4 times 5. And 4 breaks down further into 2 times 2, and then you have times 5. So if we rewrite the radical so we can kind of picture what's going on here, we actually have a pair of twos inside here that when you take the square root of it, you get one two on the outside. So you'll have two times the two that's already there. And what's going to be left behind is the square root of five. And two times two is four square roots of five. Then our next term, when we bring it down, is plus 3 square roots of 5. And then we've got our last term to deal with, and then we'll know where we're at. So we're going to break down 45 into 5 times 9. And that breaks down further into 5 times 3 times 3. So there's our matching pair that's in the radical, and they're going to, that 3 is going to come out and encounter this positive 3 here. And 3 times 3 is 9, so we'll have a positive 9 square roots of 5, because 5 will be left inside here by itself. All right, now we do have uh, like terms. We have a 4 plus 3, which is 7. 7 plus 9, well, that equals... 16. So our final simplified radical is 16 square roots of 5. Okay, we have one last example. That's number 13. Okay, notice on number 13 that I actually have negative 1 times the square root of 18 plus 2 times the square root of 18. 
So those are alike, but they both need to be simplified. So the question is, should I put them together and then simplify, or should I simplify them separately? And I'm going to have to say, why don't you combine those two like terms first and then simplify? So if we simplify down one step before we do that, we're going to have 3 times the square root of 2. And then negative 1 plus 2 is simply just 1 times the square root of 18. All right, so these two terms added together gives you this. Now we can go ahead and simplify this 18 into 2 times 9, which continues to break down into 2 times 3 times 3. So we have a pair of 3s. 1 will come out and be multiplied by that 1 out in front. And so I will, my, when I get down to this step in my simplification, I will have 3 times 1, which is 3. And my leftover that's going to be still under the radical is 2. So the square root of 2. And lo and behold, 3 plus 3 times, uh, times the square root of 2 is going to be a final answer of 6 square roots of 2. All right, these are actually kind of fun if you think about it. So good luck on finishing up today's assignment and, the, and any other work that you're given. And we'll see you later.